I cheating on my husband with his boss, so he emptied my bank account and left me broke. My husband's job has been severely damaged, and I believe that I have caused him to experience difficulties at his place of employment. Without a doubt, this is the most significant error I've ever committed, and I accept complete responsibility for my actions. I gave in to an unrelenting temptation that kept following me around, and as a result, I cheated on my husband. I have a feeling that I have not been a good discovery for my husband, despite the fact that it is said that discovering a wife is a blessing. I have no doubt that he is currently harboring a great deal of anger toward me, and you could even say that hatred is an understatement. When I think about it, I can't even bring myself to confront my parents at this point. It is impossible for me to tell them anything. Due to the fact that I have cheated on my husband, his professional life and financial stability may be in jeopardy. With everything that has happened, there is no chance that my parents would ever accept me again. Rather than merely seeking retribution, my spouse thoroughly wrecked me emotionally and made sure that I felt regret for my infidelity. He didn't let me off the hook in any way, and he never left any stone unturned in his investigation. The magnitude of all that I've been through is still a mystery to me, and it's hard to wrap my head around it. However, I am unable to deny that the reason I am experiencing so much suffering is because of the serious errors that I have committed. My name is Faith, and I am a very successful businesswoman. I am 24 years old, and I have been married to my husband Leonard for the past two years. Before we finally tied the knot, we dated for a period of two years. I was 20 years old when I first met Leonard, and he is now two years older than I am. His employment is that of a banker, and he is extraordinary in both his intelligence and his level of dedication to his work. When I think of his work ethic, I can't help but brag about it. I have come to the realization that cheating on him is the most serious mistake I have ever made. This is the reason why the consequences of my actions are striking me so hard at this moment. There was no way that I could have cheated on Leonard by mistake, if I stated that it was an accident, I would be lying. As a result of the fact that I am fully aware of how everything transpired, I am currently experiencing a strong sense of self-disgust. There are some things that people do consciously and then later come to regret, and I am not an exception to this rule. Because of this, I have made the decision to let everyone know about this big error you made. I have been married to Leonard for two years, and during that time, we have never compromised on who we are as individuals. In spite of the fact that we are constantly supporting one another, we never let our work interfere with our relationship. It was not until a few months ago that I got the opportunity to meet Leonard's supervisor, despite the fact that I had visited his place of employment on multiple occasions. I was never introduced to anyone else at that location by him. It is impossible for me to be the only one who does not know everyone who works at their spouse's place of employment, is that correct? A year ago, Leonard asked me to be his plus one to the year-end party that his bank was hosting. He had received an invitation to the event seven months earlier. The reason I enthusiastically accepted was because I never wanted to pass up a chance to show my support for him. What I had no idea was that this gathering, which appeared to be completely innocent, would end up being a disaster for my marriage. If I had known ahead of time, I would not have gone to the event. Because the color theme of the party was wine, and I did not have anything that was appropriate in that hue, Leonard went so far as to purchase me a wonderful dress and a pair of shoes for the occasion. On that particular evening, my sister, who is quickly becoming a makeup artist, assisted me with my makeup. Despite the fact that I would love to give her a shout out, I would like to keep our names as under wraps as possible. I was completely unprepared for the overwhelming event that awaited me when Leonard and I arrived at the party. The year-end celebration that was hosted by a bank turned out to be really extravagant, just like the one that we went to. When Leonard wanted to formally introduce me to his co-workers, the atmosphere was cordial and he wanted to do it immediately. Before, I would only visit his place of employment on a sporadic basis, saying hello to anybody I happened to come across. Considering that Leonard had provided me with a great deal of information regarding his co-workers, I was very excited to finally meet them. He began by introducing me to his pals, all of whom were warm and welcoming from the beginning. Rather a few of them complimented my husband on his intelligence, and I couldn't help but feel rather pleased with myself because they were completely correct. It was necessary for Leonard's supervisor to attend to something, and he left before he could introduce me to his boss. The time that Leonard and I spent together consisted of tasting various cocktails and eating the delectable meals. My husband had even wanted me to meet a certain individual, but I completely forgot about them. Nevertheless, towards the end of the party, his boss came up to us and expressed his regret for the fact that they were unable to communicate sooner. We were completely unfazed by it. 
my husband's employer is not one of the owners of the bank, rather, he is the head of the department where my husband works. Before I continue, I would like to make it clear that this is indeed the case. The name of this individual is Raphael, and he is 30 years old. I didn't give my husband much thought when he introduced us, and I didn't pay him much attention either. He did hold my hand for a little longer period of time than he normally would, but that was the only thing that I noticed that was out of the ordinary. Before departing, he did not remain with us for an extended period of time. I concluded that my husband and his employer did not have a close relationship outside of work because he frequently boasted about his co-workers, but he never actually boasted about it. Raphael was nowhere to be seen after we proceeded to have a good time throughout the evening. When I was being completely honest, I even forgot that I had met him at the party. It is hardly an exaggeration to say that the celebration turned out to be of utterly meaningless significance. That evening, there was nothing noteworthy that took place. Following our initial contact with him at the party, the actual drama began to unravel many weeks later. Upon our return to our residence, Leonard and I engaged in our customary post-event routine, which consisted of discussing everything that had transpired during the event. It wasn't until many days after the event that I realized I had completely forgotten about the meeting and the party itself. The normal flow of events resumed, and I refocused my attention on the business initiatives I was working on. With my background as an entrepreneur, I am always motivated to investigate new company concepts. The act of earning money and participating in activities that are constructive brings me a sense of fulfillment. My best buddy and I run a salon together, and it is one of the most significant business undertakings that I have ever undertaken. One day, I was surprised by a guest who came to see me. I'm sure you've already figured out who it was by this point. A visit from Raphael was made to the beauty salon. At first, I not only failed to notice him but also failed to recognize him. As I attended to a client, I was preoccupied with other things. Nevertheless, my closest friend came up to me and introduced me to a client who asserted that they were familiar with me. As a result of my curiosity, I made the decision to see who she was talking about. My husband's boss, Raphael, was standing there with the young lady, and I was completely taken aback by the observation. It took me by surprise, and I had to take a second look because I couldn't wrap my head around what I was seeing. He reintroduced himself and inquired as to whether or not I had recalled him. He then asked for a brief moment of my time, and I verified that I had already done so. Having to deal with my husband's supervisor in the absence of my husband was a really awkward experience, and I was at a loss for words. Since we had only met once previously, when he took me away for a discussion, the scenario was considerably more unsettling than it already was. He mentioned that he had been led to my salon by a recommendation from another individual. His abrupt receipt of such a reference, as well as his knowledge of the fact that I was the proprietor, left me perplexed. I was unable to contain my interest, so I decided to question about the individual who had led him to my salon. The only thing he said was that he had heard about it from my husband, who frequently emphasized that I was the owner of the grooming service. To tell you the truth, the entire chat was uncomfortable for me because I was at a loss for words regarding how to approach Raphael about the particular scenario. After our difficult talk and his stress on the need of business, he informed me that the young girl who was accompanying him was his niece, and that she needed to get her hair done on the same day. To ensure that his niece would be able to stay and get her hair done, he claimed that he had been looking for a salon where he knew someone who he could trust. Whenever she was left alone in a location, he claimed that she had a propensity to act defiantly and take off running. It was for this reason that he decided to bring her to my salon once he found out that I am the proprietor of one. His explanation struck me as a little strange, but I had no problem with the idea of taking care of a teenager, and I agreed to make sure that she remained until he came back to pick her up after work. It was before he left that we came to an agreement on that particular arrangement. While I continued to work on the customer, my best friend gave his niece's hair a quick trim. When I first arrived, I had been serving. He came back to retrieve his niece just four hours later, expressing his gratitude for her. Given that granting someone permission to stay at the salon for that length of time was a very typical event, I was slightly taken aback by his expression of thanks. In spite of this, I acknowledged his gratitude and dismissed the synchronicity as nothing more than a coincidence. Due to the fact that it appeared to be of little importance, I did not wish to focus on it. In fact, my closest friend and I were delighted with ourselves since we believed that our salon was becoming more well-known. What I thought was a coincidence turned out to be anything but a coincidence the entire time. Following my return to my house on that particular day, 
I pondered whether or not I should tell my husband about the occurrence. As a result of the constant flow of customers entering and exiting the salon, it did not appear to be a significant issue. My spouse and I had a discussion about whether or not it was important to inform him. Following some consideration, I came to the conclusion that it would be most beneficial to inform him, thereby enabling him to express his gratitude to his supervisor. My husband was informed about the situation since I wanted to convey my appreciation for his patronage. Nevertheless, he did not consider it to be a matter of serious concern. He went on to explain that numerous times at work, he had brought up the fact that I owned a salon, and he speculated that this might have been the reason why his boss became a client. I was satisfied with his agreement to express my gratitude on my behalf, and that was the end of the matter. The rest of my life resumed, and I returned to my normal routine of concentrating on my business. In spite of this, Raphael paid me yet another unannounced visit two weeks later, this time accompanied by his niece. Once again, he communicated his plan to have her hair washed during this particular occasion. As he had requested, I washed his niece's hair after expressing my gratitude to him for coming back. He remained until the hair washing was finished, which is a change from his last visit and behavior. Assuming that he had to go to work, I did not prepare myself for him to remain during the entirety of the process. Due to the fact that he is my husband's boss, I refrained from asking him questions since I wanted to respect his privacy and keep a formal approach. That being said, I was intrigued. Because his niece's hair was not very unclean and because I had not exerted a great deal of effort in washing it, I did not accept money once I had finished washing her hair. My appreciation for his visit was communicated, and I made the decision to assist his niece by braiding her hair into two portions. My generous gift was initially met with reluctance from him, as he maintained that business should be conducted in a professional manner without any discounts. On the other hand, I argued that I was merely assisting her because her hair had not required a great deal of attention. Eventually, he nodded his head in agreement to my gesture and departed with his niece. After some time had passed, my closest friend told me that she had a sneaking sense that Raphael was looking for an excuse to come see me. Initially, I responded to her statements by dismissing them as inappropriate and even feeling dumb about it. Even though I thought her comments to be awkward and inappropriate, I ended up contradicting my own position. This is something that I find amazing as I am now recounting this event. At first, my closest friend did not take the matter too seriously and treated it with a joking attitude. That day, when I got back to my house, I made the decision not to tell my husband about the experience. My greatest concern was that if my closest friend made light of the issue by implying that Raphael may be coming to see me solely for the purpose of seeing his niece, then my husband might also entertain similar notions. I made the decision to keep the knowledge to myself since I did not want to give him grounds for unwarranted uncertainty. I didn't see Raphael again for over a month after that day came to an end. And to tell you the truth, I even forgot about the comments made by my best friend. On the other hand, when Raphael showed up at the salon in an unexpected manner once more, I couldn't help but realize what my best buddy had been implying. He came in without his niece on this particular day, and he made it clear that he wanted to chat with me. At first, I pretended that I was busy with work because there were a lot of customers being served at the salon. I was feeling uneasy about having a private conversation, so I thought I might use this excuse to get out of talking to him. As a result of the large number of consumers, I informed him that I was completely overwhelmed with work. It came as a complete surprise to me when he suggested to wait till I had less work to do. I had not anticipated that he would be so patient, so the fact that he was ready to wait surprised me off guard. My assumption was that he would be too busy with his own work to have any spare time for me to ask him anything. However, this was not the case, he did not experience any difficulties while waiting. For the purpose of determining whether or not he would finally become frustrated and leave, I made the decision to purposefully extend my contacts with customer after customer. Nevertheless, he did not depart, folks. My closest friend pressed me to make a choice, and he remained until I had completed attending to the hair of each and every one of my customers. Affirming her earlier thoughts, she warned me to proceed with caution since she had a feeling that he was looking out for something other than what was right. Her statements confirmed that something unusual was, in fact, taking place, which validated the apprehension that I had been experiencing. My curiosity led me to approach him at some point and query about the reason he had visited the salon. The awkwardness in my inquiry was something that he picked up on, and he sensed my unease. His visit to my place of employment was unexpected, and he apologized for it, but he emphasized that it was of utmost significance. As he stood in front of me and engaged in conversation, 
I would be unable to accurately convey the level of discomfort and shock that I felt. Having having planted the seeds of uncertainty in my mind, my closest buddy, I came to the realization that whatever was going on in his head could not possibly be a positive thing. Since the gathering where my husband introduced us to each other, he admitted that he had been unable to stop thinking about me without a break. He acknowledged that he was actively looking for methods to get into contact with me once more, which is what prompted him to search for the location of my salon. I made an effort to stop the conversation short and act as if I was not interested in what he had to say when he first started talking. I felt it was important to provide him with the chance to clarify any confusion that may have prevailed. Nevertheless, he did not waver in his assertions and made it clear that he had complete faith in what he had to say. In addition to feeling quite anxious, I was at a loss for words regarding how to react. My husband's boss was the one who spoke to me in such a manner, and the fact that it was the first time since my marriage that another guy had spoken to me in such a manner made me feel even more uncomfortable. When he spoke to me in this manner, I voiced my disagreement and stated that it was not suitable for him to do so. As I didn't want to show disrespect to my husband, I indicated that I planned to disregard his remarks and act as if he had never been to the salon on that particular day. Despite the fact that I objected to the situation, it appears that I continued to compromise my ideals. Despite his best efforts, Raphael did not leave. He did not comply with my request to go once more, which I made in a courteous manner. In the end, I was successful in getting him to go by threatening to get in touch with my husband. Despite the fact that he left me his business card, he disappeared without delay. I was fully aware that there was no way that entertaining Raphael could result in a favorable outcome, despite the fact that the turn of events was unexpected and the situation was out of this world. I had the impression that his infatuation was motivated by a desire to use me for his own amusement. My determination to avoid becoming a victim was strengthened by the fact that I had seen a large number of films that depicted similar scenarios. The fact that I ultimately gave in despite my best efforts to resist is something that hurts me even more than it already does. It is difficult for me to describe the events that transpired when I got back to my house on that particular day. I am well aware that I will most likely be subjected to judgment and harsh criticism, and I believe that I am deserving of such treatment. When Leonard asked me about what happened at the salon, I decided not to tell him about it. The fact that I was aware that revealing this occurrence would raise suspicions was the primary factor that led me to make this decision. It was something that I considered to be quite uncomfortable and awkward, and I did not want it to create a hostile environment for him to work in there. At that moment, I came to the realization that Raphael was well aware of the fact that I would not mention his acts to Leonard due to the fact that he was Leonard's boss at work. Because he was aware that I would make every effort to safeguard Leonard's working environment, he was able to maintain his self-assurance and refrain from making unnecessary statements. Raphael became a frequent customer at the salon after he disclosed his objectives, and he continued to attend the establishment on a weekly basis with an impressive level of routine. I was recommended to discuss this pattern with Leonard by my best friend, who also saw it, but I preferred to keep my mouth shut about it. As a matter of fact, the fact that I secretly loved his regular visits is something that makes me feel ashamed. Even though my best buddy had repeatedly warned me about the issue, I chose not to confide in Leonard and continued to entertain these visits while pretending that I was unaware of the situation. During his visits, Raphael did not simply show up without any valuables, rather, he brought a variety of presents and other stuff with him. I am unable to provide an explanation as to why or how this arrangement became so commonplace, especially considering that it was less than a month after he started making consistent visits. For the same reason that I worked weekends at the salon, I started chats with him. When he wasn't at work, Raphael would come to see me. He stayed with me. We would spend hours talking about a wide range of subjects whenever he came to visit us. At that point, I don't even know what I was doing, but I can't deny that I was actively engaging with him in a variety of different ways. He began inviting me to his house after a few weeks of his visits, and I accepted his invitations with a sense of guilt. I never gave any indication that Leonard had observed anything at all. Because of my acts, I feel a profound sense of humiliation, and I can hardly comprehend how low I had taken myself. My affair with my husband became formal when I went to Raphael's place for one of these trips. It was during this visit that things became more serious. Almost immediately after it occurred, I regained my composure and hurriedly left his residence immediately. I took a number of showers because I was so disgusted with myself on that day. It seemed as if I had committed an act that could not be forgiven when I returned home, and to some extent, that is the fact of the matter. 
there is no way to rationalize my behavior because I cheated on my husband with his employer. I broke the law. I have no problem acknowledging that I have been given the consequences that I have earned. Following the event that took place at Raphael's residence, I did not visit the salon for about a month on end. In addition to blocking his phone number, I took every effort to steer clear of anything that was associated with him. Because of the enormous shame I felt, I even tried to avoid letting my spouse touch me for several days. Although I was going through a challenging period, I was aware that I was the one who brought it upon myself. My husband's desire for vengeance was particularly cruel, and the shame that I felt was only the beginning of the situation. My expectations should not have been any lower than they were. Despite the fact that I was aware that my marriage was perfect and that there was nothing wrong with it, I continued to question why I had done the things that I had done. I was unable to identify the specific cause that led me to take this course of action. I continued to put up a fight for a considerable amount of time and had no intention of giving in, but unfortunately, I gave in. I was able to convince myself that going to the salon was merely a momentary distraction and a means to amuse myself, even when he started going there on a daily basis. Now that I think about it, I understand that it was nothing more than an excuse that led to me cheating on my husband. Without even being aware of it, I gradually caved into the pressure. For the sake of my own entertainment, I claim that it was nothing more than a fleeting fancy, but in reality, it was all a lie. I am unable to continue to fool myself and act as though I was unaware of the consequences that would result from going in that direction. There is no other reason why I would engage a man who has openly professed to having affections for that person. I do not lack naivete. At the same time that I was aware that he desired something from me, I naively gave in to his demands, putting my marriage, my self-respect, and my loyalty in jeopardy. I never once gave any thought to the possibility that my husband was completely aware of the situation, even as I wallowed in feelings of self-guilt and self-pity to myself. For a moment, I was completely unaware that he was aware of everything that was going on in my head. Initially, I was under the impression that I was concealing something from him, and I assumed that he would only learn the truth when I finally worked up the guts to admit it. If someone were to ask me if I had genuinely intended to confess to my husband, I would have to say that the thought never occurred to me. I would be entirely honest about this. The truth would inevitably come to light in some form or another, but I lacked the courage to be clean about it. I was aware of this fact. Because of this, I am certain that I am deserving of the results that would result from my activities. I lied to him again and over again, acting as if everything was fine throughout the entire situation. My husband was completely aware of the truth and discovered on his own that I had cheated on him with his boss. This is much more disconcerting than the fact that he was aware of the reality. I will describe how he found out about it and how I found out that he was aware of it if you are curious about how he found it. The fact that my husband is an extraordinarily intelligent person was something that I said at the outset of this recounting. Every single word of that is accurate. It is hard to conceal anything from him because he possesses a high level of awareness of his surroundings and a significant amount of intelligence. As a result of his ability to pick up on even the most minute of details, he was able to determine that something was not quite right. When Leonard did something that was so daring, I was completely taken aback. It was exactly two months ago. As you are aware, Leonard is employed as a banker, and because of this, it was quite reasonable for me to entrust my financial matters to the bank where he has worked. In addition to that, he is responsible for my taxes and manages all of my financial problems on my behalf, effectively managing every part of my financial situation at my disposal. In the beginning of our marriage, this was the situation. During that time, I spent money in a very careless manner. I used to spend freely, purchasing anything that struck my eye, and it wasn't that I had a huge income, rather, it was simply an average one. My spouse, on the other hand, started teaching me the importance of saving money after we got married. He provided me with information on finances and taught me how to become a more responsible business owner. I began entrusting him with the majority of my tax and savings problems because his advice resulted in a significant amount of benefits for me. There were times when I chose to give my money to him just in case I felt the want to spend it in an irresponsible manner. You may call me foolish, but there were times when I did this. He had his own money, and any time I had a legitimate need for it, he would return my money to me. As a result, I never did have any reservations about him. In certain instances, he would even provide me with more dollars as a reward for my successful efforts to save a significant sum of money. Despite the fact that we had a mutual confidence in one another, I never imagined that it would eventually result in my loss. After that, 
I was confronted with a massive negative balance one day. I am the owner of my own company, and as I indicated earlier, I put a large amount of my profits into savings. My spouse is aware of my personal identification number, PIN, and as I indicated before, he is in charge of the majority of my financial concerns. On occasion, I would make a deposit of money with him, and it would be kept in his account where it was stored. My money had been completely depleted on that specific day. I felt as though I was staring into a void because there was almost nothing left for me to do on my own. When I realized what was going on, I was at the salon, and I literally ran out of there and went back home. No one was required to explain to me what had happened to my money, I was already aware of it. My spouse was the only person who was aware of my personal identification number, PIN, and had authority over my financial situation. It turned out that my assumptions were right. Upon my return to my residence, he was not present, and as a result, I was required to wait for his arrival. I challenged him about the disappearance of my money when he eventually returned, and it was the moment when I experienced yet another astonishing occurrence. After being struck across the face by my spouse with a powerful slap, I stumbled backwards out of terror. I can still vividly recall the image of his anger, which came from the immense rage and fury that was visible in his eyes. It sent shivers down my spine. According to him, marrying me was the worst choice he had ever made in his entire life. He shook his head ever so slightly and then whispered words that pierced through me like a knife. These remarks penetratingly penetrated me, and I am unable to adequately explain the level of anger that I observed in his eyes. Leonard looked me with a look of complete and utter disdain. His accusation was that I was an idiot, and he referred to me as being a loose and ignorant person. I found myself completely speechless, unable to speak a single word in response to what had just been said. It was impossible for me to find the words to express how shocked I was, and I was aware that there was nothing I could say that would make any sense. In the next statement, he disclosed that he had been aware of my adultery for a considerable amount of time. To answer your question, yes, he had been aware of it for some time. He was very critical of me because I had the mistaken belief that I could trick him and get away with it. During that particular day, I was entirely unprepared for the level of fury that I saw in Leonard. Never before had I witnessed him in such a state of rage, and I had never before anticipated that he could grow so agitated. As surprised as I was that he had found out about my romance, I was equally shocked. As soon as I stated that his boss had visited my salon, he explained that he had a sneaking suspicion that something was wrong. It would appear that he had a tense relationship with his boss, and as a result, he responded with suspicion when he learned that his boss had visited my salon. This individual had been giving him with reports on my activities despite the fact that he had surreptitiously hired someone to keep an eye on me. Leonard had been aware of it even on the day that I accompanied Raphael to his residence. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, and I questioned him about why he hadn't challenged me earlier. Despite his intention to wreak his vengeance, he stated that he would rather keep me in the dark. I questioned why he hadn't stepped in before Raphael and I pushed our relationship to the next level. I was curious about his lack of intervention. In response, Leonard stated that he did not care about what I did, he was interested in knowing whether or not I would continue to be faithful to him, and he had his answer before him. After that, he made a shocking announcement, stating that all of the money that I had saved with him as well as the cash that were placed in his bank account were now mine. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Even though I tried to convince Leonard otherwise, he did not waver in his defiance. I came to the realization that my closest friend had also deposited her money in his bank, and I was familiar with the fact that she would soon come to retrieve it. When I found myself in the midst of complete and utter anarchy, it seemed as though the entire world had come to a complete and utter halt. Before I had a chance to collect my thoughts, Leonard had already set the divorce papers on the table here. He had already signed the divorce papers, as I could plainly see. I was able to confirm this. As I made the realization that my choices would have consequences, I experienced a sense of helplessness. I expressed my deepest regret for everything that I had done to cause Leonard pain, and I begged him to forgive me. To add insult to injury, Leonard made it quite plain that he would never forgive me in a way that provided me with the satisfaction of forgiveness. I was required to leave the residence without delay, as indicated by his demand. Despite the fact that I was in a difficult financial situation and had nowhere to go, he showed no care for me. In spite of the fact that I had been through a turbulent day, I got up the bravery to inquire about the situation at his place of employment. The statement that Leonard would not take any action was made while he looked me in the eyes. In his opinion, it was not worth putting his work in jeopardy because of me. Having said that, 
I had a sneaking suspicion that he was deceiving me because I was aware that he would most likely take some kind of action. I was concerned about the effect it would have on his professional life because males have a tendency to be proud of themselves and they rarely let things like this go unnoticed. I was filled with an overwhelming sense of remorse, and the idea that he might lose his job as a result of my actions weighed heavy on my shoulders. My error was made abundantly plain by Leonard, who made it abundantly clear that I had been a dumb mistake. Before he led me out of the house, he said those in his final words to me. Over the course of the past two months, I have found myself caught in feelings of self-pity. Surprisingly, Raphael never made any attempt to get in touch with me, despite the fact that he most likely knew about what took place. I am positive that the entire city is aware of the reality, despite the fact that rumors spread like wildfire. It dawned on me that I had unknowingly become a pawn in his game. I should have known better. It was because of the problems he was having at work with my husband that he made the decision to use me as a reason to provoke him. I was so naive that I fell into the trap, and as a result, I became affected by the consequences of my actions. The divorce papers were eventually signed by me, and the formalities of our divorce are still unfinished. It is impossible for me to predict how I will make it through the following weeks, but I assume I will persevere in the same way that I have been able to make it through the past quarter. At this point, I am completely at a loss for what the next step should be. The weight of my guilt is eating me. Due to the fact that I have a court hearing scheduled for a few minutes, I will conclude this update here. After the divorce has been finalized, I will send another update. Please take note that I am now officially divorced. I find it difficult to understand that my marriage did not even last for three years. It is incomprehensible to me how I could have allowed myself to become entangled in all of this. Honestly, I am in a terrible state. It is safe to say that the comments were exactly as scathing as I had anticipated, but I didn't anticipate anything else. My expectations were met by each and every one of you. And despite the fact that it has been a difficult trip, I am thankful for the comments since they have inspired me to work on improving myself. The divorce was finalized a few days ago, and because we did not have any children, the process was not as dramatic as it could have been. However, the amount of alimony that I received was significantly lower than the required amount. Even if I can come across as greedy, what other options do I have? Every dime that was legally mine was taken by Leonard against my will. Unfortunately, I am currently in a difficult financial situation, and I owe a substantial sum of money to my closest buddy. I made an effort to take legal action. But considering that I did not have the financial means to hire a lawyer, my parents suggested that I leave it go. This has left my parents in utter disbelief, and they have no desire to communicate with me. My closest friend is the only person who has demonstrated any kind of comprehension with me. Despite the fact that she is reasonably unhappy with me and reminds me of her money on a regular basis, she gives me permission to be with her. Recently, I came to the realization that Leonard's place of employment was experiencing a significant amount of trouble. Leonard's boss does not have a direct ownership stake in the bank, rather, he is only the head of Leonard's department. It would appear that Leonard had already had a disagreement with his boss. In spite of my fears, he was unable to jeopardize Leonard's professional career. The fact that Leonard is still working at the bank doesn't help but make me feel even more sorry for myself. Things haven't really altered for Leonard and his employer despite the fact that they are making an attempt to retain a professional relationship at work. As a result of the decision that Raphael and I came to together, I am currently experiencing the most severe repercussions. Raphael is not the one who is experiencing all of the upheaval, this is the sole difference between the two. Despite the fact that I am unable to find the words to adequately express the level of self-loathing that I am currently experiencing, I believe that I would be considered a narcissist if I did not experience feelings of regret. I would loathe myself if I did not experience any regret for the things that I had done. At the moment, I am focusing my attention on my company in order to make up for the debt I owe to my closest buddy. At this point, I will wrap up this update, people. That is the condensed version of everything that has been going on in my life. My gratitude stems from the fact that I decided to go on this road and share my story with others. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me.